With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter three. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence.
checked the soles of his sandals. Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring, a sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children and heir to the Valentine fortune, had a way of making questions seem like demands. Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. his gaze and began to polish his monocle.
Creed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. Luca handed the jam to Mr. Nuncreed, and he nestled it with both hands. at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. He leaned in a bit further. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. He reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. He leaned in for a final whisper. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one Sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision. A vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Lucky for us, he decided to grow that vision here, in Beacon Pine. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. Valentine's Fertilizer Company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for purpose. But then tragedy struck, a scientific experiment gone wrong. An accident which took Sharper away from us far too soon. To this day, we struggle to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Sharper Valentine lives on. It lives in the hearts of everyone with a dream for a better tomorrow. Together, we will follow his example and grow a bountiful future. Paid for by the Valentine family and the Valentine Fertilizer Company Riverbends Fund.
forward and pinched Luca's cheek. shifted the basket uncomfortably. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. Beck locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. Hey, 
took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. Hey. Hey. Chapter 4 Dinner with the Moodwills Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change, relied on it even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. Luca's eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nellie was the one who eventually broke the silence. Ilona nervously gestured toward the boxes. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. Luca glanced over to Beck. She seemed to be holding her breath. Beck slammed her fist into the table, perhaps harder than she intended. Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rollo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rollo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. Mm -hmm.